OK, so let's see what we're actually going to do today then. Right, we are learning to, we're going to collect information, we're going to record that information in a tally chart, we're then going to present that information as a bar chart, and then we're going to come up with some really grand questions that we can ask about that information. Human graphs are a way of actually introducing children into the whole notion of uh, collecting their evidence, uh, recording their evidence, presenting their information, and then analysing and questioning at the end of the, of the whole process. And the information we're going to collect is about our favourite school meals this week, because our new cook has asked us to do a survey of the meals so far. One human graph that works really well, especially with younger children, is the one that we use to create a bar chart. And it's particularly useful if you use something that they're really interested in, like favourite food at the school canteen. We have got five meals this week. We had pizza, we've got macaroni cheese, we've got ro roast chicken, cottage pies and fish and chips. Without sharing your information without anybody else, you are allowed two votes. So you have got to look down there and you have got to decide which are my two favourite meals. You can only vote for two. It's important to involve the children all the time. So we have a tally master and their job is to stand up and collect the votes as they actually come in and keep a tally chart actually on the, on the flip chart. I'm going to ask you to put your hand up if you are a fan of pizza. Let's see, tally master. One. Good. Two. Excellent. Fourteen. Fantastic. So we have got 14 votes for pizza. Once you've completed your tally chart, then you need to choose a child to be the, the y-axis. And we normally choose the tallest child that gives you the greatest range. If we look at our tally chart, what is the largest number that we're going to have up our y-axis. What's the largest number we're going to have up our y-axis? Sunny? 15. Fantastic. 15. What gaps or intervals should we go up our y-axis if we've got to use this information from our tally chart? So who's got an idea what it might be? You could go up in twos but in odd numbers but pizza is 14, so you could put that in the middle of 13 and 15. Fantastic. I like that idea. We're going to go with that one. Well done. That's really good. Once you've got the scale, then you need to use yellow stickers just to post it on the child who's your y-axis. 15. And it's always a bit of fun working from the toe to the head. OK. Excellent. You are now my pizza. OK. Hold on to that. Having got the y-axis, we need to agree the x-axis. And in our case, the x-axis was the food that we ate on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. I want you to slowly grow to show me how popular your different dinners are. They crouch down to represent that they are zero. They've obviously checked with the tally chart so they know what value they've got. And look at your the children rise up to their appropriate heights. And this gives the impression of a bar chart growing when you're colouring it in from the bottom to the top of the bar. I think our new bar chart needs a round of applause. Well done. Why I think this is a good idea is because it's a novel way to introduce children into the construction of a bar chart. And they're left with a very good visual memory. There's going to be three activities that you're going to be doing outside. We're going to get yourself into little groups in a minute. I'm going to show you some of the activities you're going to be doing because I actually managed to Olympic maths is a really nice way to be able to actually give the kids a reason to be measuring. And now they're just going to throw, try and get it as close to the target as possible. Oh, George did very well down there. If we were going to measure this one, which do you think you would use. At the beginning of the lesson, uh, we recap things that they know. So we look at the rulers, we look at the intervals on the rulers, the difference between maybe a 30 centimetre ruler and then a metre rule. Uh, we talk about which will be useful for the situations that they're becoming into. What we've 
got here set up is we've got five of the standing high jumps. And then all you need to do is a two-footed jump. All right? What you then need to do is you can use the ruler so you'd be able to put it down up against the pole that you've just jumped and then measure accurately from there. We've got the throwing ones here. So you need to be stood at your base, which is here. You take your bean bag and you're going to try and throw it as close as you can to the blue marker over there. In the target practice, they're probably going to be using the 30 centimetre ruler because they're going to be getting a lot closer. 27.5 centimetres away. Whereas when they're doing the long jump, you'd hope that they're probably going to go past a metre, so they need to be using the metre ruler. So this is the standing long jump. You've got your white line here, which you need to make sure your toes are right behind. And then what you're going to try and do is you're going to try and bounce and jump as far as you can. All right, so you're ready? You're going to jump, and one of your group needs to put their finger where your furthest back heel is. Then that means you can pick up your ruler and then work out where you'd actually manage to jump to. All right? The competition side of it, I think the kids really, really enjoy it. The fact is, you know, everybody wants to try and beat their personal best. And in the process, they're obviously being really accurate with their measuring because they want to make sure if it's coming to a very close final as to who might have jumped further, they want to make sure that they've got it absolutely spot on. A really nice thing is to give the kids a camera. Really nice if it's got a video function on it as well. The children, all of a sudden, get you photographs, get you video, but from their perspective. It's them talking to their friends in the situation that they're in. Today, Annie did the high jump and her score were 29 centimetres. Then I got 36. So all of a sudden, you're getting just a little bit more from the children because they're talking to somebody who they feel very comfortable with and they're talking in the way that they do to a friend. OK, guys, so we've finished our measuring, we've finished our jumping and our throwing and all of those things. What we've got here is we've got a Venn diagram, all right? At the end of the lesson, the children have got their information, they've got their data that they've recorded on the sheets. Uh, that data can be used for multiple things. It can be used to put into a Venn diagram to discuss what's been going on. It can be used in a, a bar chart to represent the data that the children have found. There are lots and lots of options that the children can then move on in the next lesson and use information that they've already gained. Yeah. Very good. I think this is a great maths lesson idea because it actually gives them a purpose. Rather than saying, go and measure a fence or a paving slab, they're actually going out there, they're doing something they enjoy, they're working with their friends, they're talking about it, and they're coming away with some really, really good results. The main focus of this lesson is to estimate and record intervals of time. OK, our mental maths objective this morning is to count in steps of five. So the first thing we're going to do is to play a game in a circle together. So a good idea to start this lesson for a warm-up activity is practising counting in steps of five. Right, what we need to do is you need to pass the egg around the circle counting in fives. Sophie, what would you start with? Zero. Off you go. Zero. This will help the children with their telling of the time on an analogue clock face. Twenty-five. Thirty. <coughs> 35. <coughs> to extend the children's thinking about counting in steps of five and to put this again into practice, I played a game with them called Five Peas in a Pot. Right, what we're going to do now, to carry on our counting in steps of five, I have a pot full of five pea coins. I've got an empty pot here. I'm going to drop some of these five pea coins, one at a time, into the empty pot. You need to close your eyes and count how many times you can hear a coin drop into the pot. Then you need to use your counting in steps of five to tell me how much money will be in this pot. It really makes them listen and concentrate and use their counting skills, actually physically counting how many 5p coins they can hear falling into the pot. OK, could you put your hand up and tell me how many coins did you hear drop into the pot? Maxine? Seven. Seven, well done. In our classroom, we have a TARDIS. This is all about the theme of time travel, which is our topic for this term. 
For this activity, one of you will go into the TARDIS, close the door and come out when you think 30 seconds is up. We decided to have a go at using the TARDIS in our maths lesson and as one of the activities which involved the children estimating and recording themselves doing things, we decided that they would love to use the TARDIS for this. Another one of your group will be timing outside 30 seconds on the stopwatch and we will see what the time is on that stopwatch when you come out. We're going to make a tally on the chart just behind you to show when each of you came out. Are you ready? Yes? OK. Twenty-nine seconds. Well done. Very close. So, Michael, where do you think on the tally chart we need to mark it? Yeah. Excellent. OK. Go in. OK. Thirty-three seconds. Oh. So more than, more than 30 seconds. It's good to choose fun activities for the children to do, especially ones that will get them moving around. Ready, so you go. How many times can you write your name out in 30 seconds? Four. Ready, steady, go. Can you stand on one leg for 30 seconds? How many times can you jump in and out of a circle in 30 seconds? How many times can you bounce a ball in 30 seconds? The children can use all the data they've collected to create a chart on the interactive whiteboard to clearly illustrate the results that we have from the investigation. Using the tally chart that we put together on the TARDIS, we can have a look at the data on here to see who came out in less than 30 seconds, who came out exactly on 30 seconds, and who came out maybe in more than 30 seconds. Isabella, how many people came out in less than 30 seconds? 19. Thank you, well done. We can use our chart here to put on 19 people. So if we take this up, we can show there that 19 people came out before 30 seconds. Hands up if you came out of the TARDIS exactly 30 seconds. Well done. Kyra, could the you resources you'll need for this lesson will be stopwatches, activity cards for the children to know what they're doing when they arrive at a certain investigation, tally charts around the room for the children to record their data on, and of course, a TARDIS.